My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of February 17th, 2018. Our title story this week comes from the Entertainment Software Association, the game industry lobby group funded by the biggest companies in gaming. The ESA has submitted a filing to the U.S. Copyright Office to prevent the removal or modification of the anti-DRM tampering clause, which could allow for an exemption for game preservation organizations. Their argument effectively equates to, we can't let gamers keep playing games that we shut down because then it'll be harder to sell them new games or additional live services since they're busy playing old games or as it's known in the business world, planned obsolescence. The U.S. Copyright Office reviews the clauses of the DMCA every so often, and essentially right now the usual fair use exemptions that apply to libraries, museums, and the like are trumped by a clause which prevents anyone from tampering with digital rights management, or DRM. It's basically a gotcha clause which destroys a fair use exemption, and the industry doesn't want it to go away. This comes up every few years and gamers lose every time. So I wouldn't expect much in the way of change here, but it is worth being aware of that the whole move to online only is a very intentional and active choice by the big game publishers. And given the sheer volume of video game museums and libraries out there, the industry really should be terrified, shouldn't it? It's like yelling at somebody for picking up a bottle that you dropped and walked away from because you're going to come back and recycle it 10 years later. Get your party hat, Sea of Thieves will have microtransactions, yay! Rare has confirmed that they're coming about three months after release, and everything will revolve around cosmetics, but with an added hitch. No loot boxes. Rather, all items bought in-game will be bought with digital currency, which you can also earn in-game in some way. But you'll always know what you're buying, which, in my view, is about as fair as things can be when a retail price just isn't enough to make the shareholders pucker up. To take it a step further, though, the first cosmetic items are planned to be pets. So you can have a monkey or a cat on your ship, or maybe a parrot with Tourette's if I have anything to say about it. While I'm not keen on any post-launch monetization done via unlocking assets in the base game, at least it's open and honest. Ethics are like the pirate's code, more guidelines than actual rules. The Kickstarter-backed System Shock Remaster, which raised a cool $1.3 million, which is like $200,000 after backer rewards are dealt with, has been put on hiatus. Stephen Kick, the CEO of Night Dive Studios, posted an update on the Kickstarter page discussing how the studio had lost focus. Quote, As the CEO and founder of Night Dive Studios, a company that was built on the restoration of the System Shock franchise, I let things get out of control. I can tell you that I did it for all the right reasons, that I was totally committed to making a great game, but it has become clear to me that we took the wrong path, that we turned our backs on the very people who made this possible, our Kickstarter backers." End quote. Emphasis is mine. This sounds to me just like taking responsibility in precisely the same way as saying, I'm sorry, your feelings got hurt, which is to say, not very. I do find it interesting that Stephen Kick's Kickstarter didn't work out as planned. You could say I'm shocked. Blizzard Entertainment is holding a private ND8 event sometime by the end of the month, and a number of professional Warcraft 3 players have been invited to attend. Despite attempts by many to dig out the details, all that's been confirmed thus far is that the only folks we know are going are all big names in Warcraft 3, and they've had to obtain travel visas, as many of them come from outside of the US. To those expecting a big announcement of a Warcraft 4, though, I will say that I wish I had your childlike, bright-eyed, and bushy-tailed optimism. And yes, I know I'm real fun at parties. At this stage in the game, the only logical result is a remaster of Warcraft 3, just like StarCraft had. Major Blizzard announcements happen at BlizzCon and Gamescom, and unfortunately March is just too soon for such a thing. Personally, I'm waiting for Blizzard to call me for the Diablo 1 Hellfire expansion remastered event, but I'm starting to lose hope. A Blizzard expansion crafted by Sierra. Can't imagine why they never mention it. And our good news game story of the week. The rampage against loot boxes from the perspective of politicians is picking up steam, if you'll excuse the small pun. U.S. Senator Maggie Hassan from New Hampshire sent a letter to the ESRB expressing concerns over loot boxes, specifically calling on the recent addition of gaming disorder to the World Health Organization's international classification of diseases. And our old friend Chris Lee, the guy making the Star Wars It's a Trap joke in an actual press briefing, has made some headway in Hawaii. A set of bills have been proposed designed to begin the process of regulating loot boxes in video games. Under said bills, games containing loot boxes would require the games to provide probability rates of the loot box rewards, and regardless of the game rating, 
sale of those games with randomized purchase-based microtransactions would be prohibited to anyone under 21 years old with ID required at purchase, even if the ESRB rates the game as E for everyone. Personally, I think this is a great first step. Gaming is big money and quite frankly, blatant consumer manipulation has no place in ethical businesses. Your game releases for the week of February 18th, 24th are as follows. February 20th, the date so many 30-year-olds have been waiting for, we will get the new Age of Empires Definitive Edition. It's Age of Empires, but with new art, remastered audio, and snazzy new UI. I've been looking forward to swarming my enemies with peasants for a while, and luckily, it's only available on the Microsoft Store for your convenience. And also on the 20th, a new video game renaissance starts with Metal Gear Survive. Late to the zombie survival party, but right on schedule by Konami time, create your own new character, scavenge resources, and build a base camp by yourself or with friends to fend off a zombie apocalypse by doing what the genre has been doing for years. It's kind of like what would happen if you gave a group of mechanics half a Porsche and a Datsun diesel pickup and told them to make a new vehicle. It might run, and you might be able to use it, but it'd be better for your safety, sanity, and self-esteem to just walk. This has been your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of February 17th, 2018. My name is Tarmac. Thanks for watching. <laughs>